Welcome to the City of Shelton Commission meeting. Would you please stand and we'll do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on our agenda tonight is under commission reports and the first commission report it will be uh, the colonial project and uh, Mr. Steve Goins is going to present us with something and I believe there's a video included in this. Thank you Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, yeah, we wanted to take a little time to um, recognize the good work Green Diamond uh, did down at the Colonial House and I have prepared a little uh, brief uh, presentation that in part this gives you kind of an overview of the project and it's kind of explains to the public you know exactly what happened in, um, um, kind of in a snapshot format. Um, with us tonight is Diana Goldie who was the project manager. She was the, the, the vision for the project, the person on the ground orchestrating a lot of the work and um, uh, I think you'll see through these presentation how well it turned out. Um, I don't have the clicker though that I can't move it along. Um, the site itself is within the Simpson Reed Historic District. It's just north of the Colonial House. The Colonial House is identified on this map. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to read, but in the, the upper portion you can see the various um, historical uh, sites that are under register are labeled and it's number two there that is the colonial house and the other half of that block if you will above that is the location of the project which was an expansion and enhancement of the grounds of the colonial house this is the colonial house um, 222 Pine Street pretty well recognized item in town maybe the hallmark of the district itself and the project was to try to create some larger grounds and expand the uh, various capability for using the facility for events outdoors and um, uh, also to uh, help preserve it from possible damage or fire uh, because of the, the condition of the property that was there. This is the property um, as it was before uh, the project began, uh, 422 North 3rd. Um, the latest business that was in this location was Enhanced Garden and um, this is a, a structure that um, in itself had some historic merit but over time it had had additions and had different things happen so it really wasn't intact any longer and the preservation board um, looked favorably on removing this building in favor of the the project and um, that was a element of what Diana had to go through and Green Diamond to move this along this is um, some depictions of what the grounds looked like before they started and which was some of the concern there was a lot of um, illegal activity, a lot of accumulation of junk and debris on the site and um, so th this project in part was to remove this from the uh, adjacent to the colonial house is wh where it currently was located. This depicts some of the construction. Uh, you can see the house um, in the process of demolition. The picture at the bottom is taken probably right around the sidewalk there and, and you begin to get a vision for the project because now you can see clearly the colonial house and the connection of the property to the building. Here's some of the construction underway. Um, the picture on the left, upper left, is depicting a um, um, commencement of an area where they've designed into the site a area for uh, interim parking on a uh, grass grid system which um, offers um, uh, stability as well as stormwater enhancement. Um, you can see the formwork there for the, um, the, um, the raised wall at the, along the perimeter where the sidewalk and the, the decorative fencing will be. Um, this is I think one of the um, benefits the project um, um, was able to enhance Canyon Creek which flows right through the site. The picture on the left is where it flowed against the house and in fact the house is over the, the creek in that one location and the picture on the right of course is the enhancement which included some buffer and some planting 
um, along the same creek um, alignment. This shows some of the um, uh, work in progress for this um, uh, grass uh, paving element. Uh, you can see the product itself going in on the left. It gets filled with uh, pea gravel and sand. The upper right is what it looked like approximately two weeks after it was hydro seeded. It looks even better than that now. This um, depicts some of the other improvements that went into the project. You can see on the upper left there's a, a nice cedar fence that's been painted. Uh, that matched the neighboring fence. It's pretty extensive amount of fencing as well as a picture on the upper right shows the wrought iron fencing that leaves the visually open to the community as well as uh, a new ADA um, accessible sidewalk in both directions there on that corner. The bottom shows some of the uh, enhancements of the, the landscaping itself and a uh, pedestrian bridge going over the creek with some decorative railings on that. Um, the picture on the upper left also, you really can't see it very well, but there's some um, light standards there that are um, um, a 1920s circa design, look like, look like old gas lamps, um, which are part of the project too. So in conclusion, that's kind of the before and after. That's what it looks like today. I took that picture this morning. So I think Diana Goldie's here, and I believe the commissioners have a, you can come up here now. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you want to read that um, proclamation, Mayor? Sure, I can read it. If my glasses will adjust to it properly. It says here, this is an achievement award, and this is from the city of Shelton, and we present this to Green Diamond Resource Company. This award recognizes Green Diamond Resource Company and Diana Goldie, the project manager, for the successful completion of the Colonial House grounds expansion and upgrade. The project design complements a historical Colonial House, increases the availability the ability to utilize this facility and represents a positive addition and enhancement to the Simpson Reed Historical District. We commend you for making this such a beautiful project and thank you for the significant investment in our community. Thank you. I was hoping today to say it's finished, but they uh, delayed me one more day on the rest of the iron railing, so All right. the gate will go in they tomorrow. They don't have a photo op, but let's pretend oh, one. Okay. You okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just wanted to <coughs> say that I, I'm glad that Diana got singled out as for her contribution to it. I, I walked by there many times, and she was constantly trying to put a paintbrush in my hands, and I think I unloaded a bunch of wood for her. And so she was uh, she was out there really working it. So I, I really appreciate it. It's a great addition. Yeah, I, w I wanted to add to that too, Diana. You're really to be congratulated, and it it really the Colonial House I've always thought is one of the gems that that Shelton has, and it's so nice to be able to see it now from a, a major road where you can you know people that are just driving through town can see what a wonderful facility it is and how beautiful it is, and it's it's one of the few times when you can say that a parking lot is really a good thing, so that's <laughs> it's always nice to be able to say that, and, and it's beautiful. It's really a wonderful. Yeah. Um, but foot traffic, you know, to be able to have people out there walking around and it's just in a week or two. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda is our commission weekly reports. Commissioner Pinnell. Thank you. I did have a chance on. Uh, Saturday to go out. I forgot to announce this at the last meeting, but uh, for every year, for a number of years now, we've gone out to uh, the Latvian village out on Highway 10, what is that, 102, <laughs> out there by the prison. Um, and it's a, we have a sister city. I don't, a lot of people don't realize that Shelton has a sister city in Latvia. And uh, that's kind of how we made the connection with these folks. And they come over every year, and it's uh, high school kids that come and spend a month at this facility and speak only Latvian and dress in traditional Latvian clothes and they learn folk dances and songs and things. And they have a, a graduation, which is what we went to on Saturday. And it's really amazing to walk in. We've gone probably, oh gosh, maybe 10 years now 
out to, out to this place. I still haven't learned any Latvian except for, I can say thank you. That's about it. Um, but they speak only Latvian and you walk in and all you hear is this, this strange language. But after a while you can kind of figure out what they're saying and you can kind of follow along with the story of the, the program that they put on. So it was really a wonderful thing and it's nice uh, to carry on that, that tradition of the sister city that Shelton has over there. So that's what I did this weekend. All right, Commissioner Olson. I have no meetings this week, but I just want to remind everybody that tomorrow is the uh, primary election, so good luck to the candidates and get your ballots in. Um, this week I will be attending tomorrow, on Tuesday, the left board meeting, and on Thursday an EDC uh, a board meeting, and that concludes our weekly commission reports. Uh, if there's any general public comment, we have a three-minute time frame. Please feel free to come forward and sign in a name and address on the end of the table there. And um, Thank you very much, uh, Commission. My name is Forrest Cooper from 409 West Railroad. And uh, I'm also on the Historic Preservation Board, and I just wanted to uh, commend Green Diamond and Diana Goldie for all their hard work creating the plan um, that's going to greatly enhance one of our historic neighborhoods. Uh, her vision, something that wasn't mentioned in the deal there, was her vision includes landscaping and fixtures that are reflective of the area or the era the colonial house was built. What was that, the early 20s and 30s, somewhere in there? Um, which coming to the, the board meetings and presenting uh, all the different intent behind everything they were doing. It's a really cool project with a lot of thought. And I just wanted to uh, personally, just for me, not from the board, just for me, say I think it's a really awesome project. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see that happening. Um, something else that happened within that, uh, I had pleasure of speaking with uh, Mrs. Bennett that had Bennett's photo studio there at one time. And she was really happy to hear that much of the materials from the structure that were there were recycled and reused, which was really a neat thing that they did. In fact, I, Diana herself was out there uh, pulling a lot of the materials off that house. So uh, I, I think sometimes people don't realize how much heart and soul go, go into these projects. And it was really good to, good to see. Um, as one of the members of the board that went out and looked at the structure, uh, I myself and another member of the board went out there to try and see does the structure have any historical qualities left to it, uh, which is anything that would be reviewed for a project that's going to require demolition. And looking around that structure, it was amazing at how many times it had been added on. You couldn't really see any original wall structure to that building except one partial roof line and one end of a peak, I think was the only thing we were actually looking at that was part of the original structure. So due to the fact it was added on to so many times and it was in such bad shape, what they're doing is a great improvement. And I just wanted to say, uh, nice work. Keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is our consent agenda, and I believe Commissioner Olson had something he wanted to pull and put on under old business at this time. Uh, yeah, we're going to remove uh, warrant number 81539 for old business. Okay, so we're pulling that out of the consent agenda, placing it under old business at this time, and but everything else remains the same. So. Uh, uh, as the fellow commissioners, have you had ample time to review all the other material in the consent agenda? If so, then could we please have a reading of the consent agenda, Wendy? Consent agenda number one, vouchers numbered 81451 through 81538 and 81540 through 81564 in the amount of 438000 $976.96. Number two, commission meeting minutes from business meeting July 1st, 2013. Study session July 8th, 2013. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I move we approve the consent agenda. I'll second the motion. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I also on the favorative on that one. No opposed. Thank you. 
I forgot to say I myself. There you go. Once in a while you forget things. So the consent agenda passes except for that warrant number 81539 and under we're placing that under old business. Can we address that first? Maybe you would like to explain your concerns on that one and we can uh, talk about uh, it at this time. Sure, I'll just make a brief statement and I think Greg was going to address this, uh, Public Works Director. Yes, uh, the total amount of the warrant was $478,483.37. And uh, when I read that, I was quite shocked. Uh, uh, the last I remembered that our, our bid package for that was $365,000. So I wanted to find out what was going on. And so I'll turn it over to Greg Clark for that explanation. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, to give you and the rest of the uh, listening audience here a little overview, this, as you remember, was a fast track project um, that we out in front of the state's SR3 paving project that we anticipated starting in early July, mid July time. And um, the staff worked pretty diligently to get that project out and finished um, and then um, and, and awarded under you know a low bid of, like you mentioned $365,000. Um, as the project uh, moved in its course um, several things were found. Um, a couple of the items in the quantities were um, the, the consultant that we had um, underestimated the, the amount of the materials we needed. And so those particular quantities, uh, we paid the bid, you know, the low bid price, but those quantities were, were in excess of the amount we needed. Um, the other item was, the, like I mentioned, the, the urgency of getting the project out. We anticipated not completely filling the trenches um, of asphalt because we were under the assumption that the state was coming right behind us and grinding off these trench uh, areas with their project. And so why pay for asphalt that was going to get ground off? Well, when we found out that the uh, delay in the project included uh, such a delay that we knew that having three inch lips on all these trenches uh, in the area of the project uh, was a safety hazard and the public wouldn't, you know, we didn't want to subject the public to that. So uh, we were required to install, you know, that additional three inches lift of asphalt to bring it to the surface. And uh, that was right around $45,000 worth of extra paving. Um, the third element of it was the storm drainage uh, modifications that we did associated with adding Pine Street onto the SR3 project. As you remember, our we had a portion of the state's bid for our uh, paving of both First Street and we wanted to add Pine Street. In fact, the commission, commissioners uh, approved that as an item to add to the state's contract. And um, by doing that, we needed to modify the storm drainage um, in the area of Pine Street in order to be ready for that paving uh, to happen. Um, a couple of the other things were just associated with typical construction in that we had envisioned where certain uh, utilities were and um, when we ended up excavating and, and installing the storm line, uh, encounters were found that we had to modify and, and change things in the field to um, to fix those and it required additional materials in that. So um, those are the primary drivers of why the, the project cost went up like it did. Questions and comment? I have a question. Um, I guess at this point, what could we have done differently in order, would, would, would we have needed, I know it was a fast track, would we have needed a little updates a little bit on those items so we could have maybe approved them as we went along rather than, I guess, kind of discovering it now maybe. Would that have been something we could have done? Probably, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, it would have been, it, you know, appropriate for us to have come back and enlightened you. I think we did talk to Don at, at some of the uh, our weekly meetings and discuss some of the things that were going on with the project. We didn't realize until the end about the, the asphalt amount, which was a significant amount. Um, we did have several change orders, and I forget the dollar uh, value of those change orders that actually were signed change orders um, that, that added to the project. Primarily, those were associated with the uh, storm drainage uh, elements on the job. Um, 
it, it was a fast track project. They completed it in 20 days, so it happened pretty fast. But you're you're exactly right. We should have been more forward in in uh, you know giving the commissioner more more of an understanding of these these changes in the job as it proceeded. I was also a little curious that you mentioned that the consultant underestimated the amount of uh, backfill material. How did how does that happen? That was that was a significant. That was like thirty thousand dollars worth. Yeah, it. I, mean, I understand the asphalt part and the, the other change orders, but you know we hire a consultant for you know specific reasons, and you know to miss thirty thousand dollars worth. I, I believe that was seventeen thousand seven hundred dollars um, in the in the uh, crush surfacing. Oh, is that all okay? Uh, but well, the um, oh, wait a minute, and the trench width. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, the bank yeah, run gravel. Between certain. the combination of those two elements, we. Um, Basically, oh, uh, my city engineer here, he told me the difference was between cubic yards and tons. That's what it appears to be. If you look at the numbers, he it's... guessed cubic yards and... and they estimated tons. cubic yards. We bid it as tons, and nobody caught the that conversion, which is a roughly a two-time conversion to get to the tonnage we would need. Well, um... <clears throat> I get it now. <laughs> um, I, I hope that in the future, um, obviously I'm sure some of these will be addressed a little better the next time. And also, I, I point out, you, you mentioned there were some as builds that weren't properly taken care of how many years ago. And I wanted to did, do point out that the current engineering staff and the field staff are, are doing very good work on addressing that now for future, for projects that we have going. So uh, uh, those as builds are pretty important, and if they're not done, you can see it, it really hurts. It costs a lot of money, and and I'm I'm nervous going forward how much this is going to affect the stormwater fund for the you know future projects. So it's it's a it's a big concern. So hopefully we don't have it again. Yeah. But the, the the I guess the reality is that you know had we had the correct numbers and had bid the job with those numbers, the price would have been you know what we paid because the they were unit price items and we just needed more of it um, it's just the unfortunate nature of, of having to add that additional cost to something we thought was going to come in less than it did but in reality you know the contractor did give us very good bids and um, you know the, the project would have cost with the project cost we didn't really run into you know items that weren't needed per se it's just it's unfortunate the estimates were lower and you made decisions on on a number that was lower but it, it it's kind of one of those things that every once in a while things get missed and and in the speed of some of these jobs uh, that's unfortunate and and we try to do our best but in this case too timing was an issue I mean we did we did think that the state was coming right along behind us and it turns out they're not so you know, in hindsight, we can we can look at those things, but at the time, it it seemed like the the right thing to do, and we really could not have left the trenches the way they were. I mean, they anybody who drove on them knew that that wasn't going to work. So you know, we almost we, we did what we had to do. So it's it's kind of one of those things that that when you dig in the ground and create things like that, you run into problems sometimes, and this is a perfect example of that. I I do yeah I understand I, I was a contractor uh, for a long time and sometimes n you do everything you can but s seeing everything you just can't b figure out everything but I do I take this opportunity to thank Commissioner Olson for seeing this and bringing this forward because he caught something and sometimes with the immense amount of paperwork we all go through this is what we do this is what we're supposed to do and I do commend him for bringing this forward at this point we have a decision to make and I would support or entertain a motion that we do pay the bill and we take this as uh, you know a lesson and 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 you know if 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 there was a motion I would probably support adding this back under the consent agenda and voting on it with with the as as it's just another learning uh, curve situation and uh, 21 days is a, a short amount of time to run everything through probably so that would be my suggestion if there was uh, after this discussion the willingness to pay the bill 
I would move that we approve warrant number 81539 in the amount of $478,483.37 to Roglins <coughs> Incorporated. No second, the motion. There's a motion, a second to approve awarding um, this money uh, for this, this work. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next under old business is an asphalt purchase. And just did. we just did that? No. We did? No. This is a different one. Different one. Different uh, one? Yeah, a different one. And these are this is our city engineer, Mike Michael, I believe is going to talk to us about that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Yes, this is a different one. It, it, it is asphalt again, but this is a different one. This is the uh, presentation that I brought forward to you back on July 22nd when we didn't have any bids for our contract that we put out for supply of our annual asphalt needs for our uh, maintenance and overlay projects. Um, as you may recall at that time we requested that the Commission concur in a process to reissue the invitation to bid for a limited amount of time and also pursue a couple potential other options just in case we didn't receive any bids. Um, on July 24th we actually reissued the invitation to bid and uh, scheduled an opening for last Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, at that time we actually received two bids this time so uh, after evaluation of those bids we believe both bids are uh, fully responsive uh, and responsible bidders and both have very good prices so at this time we are actually coming forward with a recommendation that the Commission award both companies contracts for future supply uh, for uh, asphalt material HMA as needed for city maintenance and overlay projects um, and those two f companies are Granite Construction out of Belfair and Pyramid Materials who is the uh, owner operator of the old Ace plant out on Brockdale Road. Well and to that end, we're asking the commission approve these contracts by signing the attached award documents and authorize the mayor to sign the contracts when they return. Any uh, questions or comments? How do you choose which one when you're doing a project? We have four classes of material in there, and there'll be two steps. It'll be similar to our uh, on-call engineering services. Uh, our initial request will go to the lowest adjusted bidder for the material we're looking for. In this case, we have a base bid for the material, and then we have either picked up or delivered prices for two grades of asphalt. Um, for the picked up prices, we asked for the plant that they're gonna supply from, and we applied a mileage factor round trip to account for the cost of our crews to go there and back. So in this case, for our primary product, uh, what's called half-inch class uh, performance grade 6422 HMA, uh, that would be um, pyramid materials out of the Brockdale pit. Um, they came in about $2 less adjusted. Uh, for our other three classes of material, that would actually be granites out yeah. of their Belfair plant. So, And then the second piece of that puzzle is can they deliver within the time that we need and that they committed to in their proposal. So. And would this be asphalt for like the Fairmont project? Is that the no? That? This would be for like patching of sewer repairs, water repairs, internal utility uh, repairs to their systems, as well as the annual overlay program that the streets department does. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So I guess if this commission concurs with this decision, I feel comfortable in moving forward and authorizing this. Uh, I don't know if a motion is necessary to do that. If, uh, if we need a motion, I'm sure we could make one. I think we... Does it ask for one? E no. Yes. No, we're actually asking for the the decision this week. Can you walk in with the staff report tonight? 
we briefed on this two weeks ago when we reissued it. I remember uh, talking about this uh, two weeks ago. But yeah, just tonight we did get this. Is there a real time crunch on this decision? Knowing the state of asphalt and Probably asphalt companies. Getting it in on, <clears throat> getting the contracts back on time. Um, we'll leave that decision up to the commission. The one concern we have is getting the actual contracts in place to meet the crew's schedule for their paver projects this year, which is anticipated to start the 19th. Hmm. So I restate my willingness to sign this uh, being based upon the fact that two weeks ago we were, we were there was no bidders two weeks ago. We went out and rebid it. So, so I, I would make my decision based upon that. But if my fellow commissioners feel they want another week to think about this, it appears we will not lose them if we wait a week. That is correct. This is bid under the standard DOT format, mm -hmm. so we have technically 45 days to actually award and execute a contract, mm -hmm. so. Well, why don't we just put it under um, <clears throat> the consent agenda for next week, and that way we can all wait a week. Seems like we could concur on that, I suppose. I. Do you feel comfortable signing? Do you want to do that tonight? I'm kind of uh, comfortable signing. Just it. you're okay. I'm okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it is always good. I mean, protocol. You know, the three touch thing was really good. And uh, but um, we did get hear about it two weeks ago. But this tonight paperwork was kind of fast on us here. So you know, there's always you know we got our job and you got your job. So we kind of. Working together on this, yeah. Don't don't feel bad if you take a week to look at it. I don't think it's gonna. I mean, it would be nice to get the contract moving, but I totally understand and feel free to take a, a week. We'll put it on the consent agenda for next week. And they technically, we can't even send them the contract till the award forms are mm -hmm. signed. Well. I guess this is, I'm chairing the meeting, so we're just kind of uh, trying to figure out exactly what we want to do in this situation, and every situation is slightly different. I think that we probably uh, ought to just wait a week, and let's put it under next week's consent agenda. There we do it. We'll do it that way. Fair enough? Fair enough. Sounds good. Okay, new business. Uh, we have the Historical Preser Preservation Board appointee, and this briefing will be uh, presented to us by our city planner. Eric Burke. There's Eric. Evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. Um, before you is a briefing and a letter of interest from Kathleen Wall. Um, she's come before the board. She actually has attended most of the meetings since January. Um, and as you will read through the briefing, um, she's lived here in our house for 34 years. She was married to our, one of our past founding members, um, David Hastings, who, who passed on. And also she worked for the Washington State Archives. Our board uh, highly recommends for an um, appointment to the Shelton Historic Preservation Board. And um, so I'm bringing it before the City Commission for their approval. Questions or comments? I'd say she's um, certainly qualified. Yes, I I, uh, I think this would be a great addition. Uh, I, knew, I knew Dave well and, mm -hmm. and Kathleen. I, I think you'd be great at it. And I also wanted to make comment about losing Jane Groover. Yeah. You know, she was a longtime member and, and uh, very sweet lady. And I always mm -hmm. liked how at the meeting she would she would correct all spelling <laughs> because she's an ex ex English teacher. She was quite good at that. So sorry to lose her, but I think it, I think uh, it'd be a great addition to have Kathleen on there. All right. It appears we have a consensus to uh, put her on the uh, on the board, and we'll put that under the consent agenda for August 12, 2013. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Eric.
Item number two is an energy efficient project update and that briefing will be given to us by Mr. Steve Goins. Thank you again, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, just as a means of background, in 2011 we commenced a process to study the Civic Center to see if there was a potential for some energy savings through various projects. We hired um, Sunset Air to perform an investment grade audit and they determined that there was a number of elements that we could um, uh, complete that would save a sufficient amount of energy and uh, in fact they believed that the uh, savings would offset the cost for um, the funding for the project along with other grants and incentives that could be offered. We um, uh, hired Sunset Air um, ultimately as the ESCO or the energy services company and embarked on the design and ultimately the construction of the project and, and just as an overview uh, we replaced five of the rooftop units, um, um, mainly the, uh, the, the big unit up there, AC1, um, which were also approaching their, their lifespan and the timing of doing that was very beneficial to the city as we were probably going to be faced with replacing some of these units over the next three to five years anyway. We um, took on some uh, <coughs> roofing upgrades as part of that, that work to uh, deal with some um, uh, leaking issues we had on the roof. Um, we completed some um, system management upgrades which included some um, better efficiencies within the duct work. We added some electrical um, light, um, wiring and, and controls. We uh, purchased a, um, a, a management system which now allows us to um, operate and manage the, the unit from a desktop on a, on a laptop unit. Um, we did some lighting control upgrades, and you've probably seen that in the Civic Center. There's some motion sensors in there now. If no one's in there, the lights can go off. We um, upgraded the material of the skylights on the second floor. Um, we had a lot of comments from staff at the time about the, uh, particularly in the summer under those skylights. Um, they were uh, single layer polycarbonate uh, lenses that replaced with a multi higher efficiency glass. Just fairly inexpensive fix for us and uh, in total uh, the project was funded for $125,660 and we embarked on that project. The project uh, uh, went fairly smoothly. Uh, we didn't in encounter a lot of issues along the way. In the end uh, we expended $414,482. The project is uh, fully paid for. The number includes the retained we still are carrying until Release that. Um, total, the project was a little over 11,000 under budget, about 2%. And um, I also included in your your um, briefing report some of the sources of the funding. I thought that was um, a good information to know. We we did receive a grant from the state for just over 106,000 to pay a portion of the cost. We received an incentive rebate from the Cascade Natural Gas for $7,744. We're in the process of receiving a, a incentive rebate through the PUD. They work in concert with Bonneville Power. Um, we have to report a year's worth of savings before that can be fully executed. Um, so that that's a, a pending grant at this time and the city anticipates about $193,000 in funding as their portion of this work. Um, as the briefing report also points out, our, our target was to save just over $22,000 in cost. In the brief time we've been able to monitor this, it appears we're on target for that. It's not a long enough period of time to really assess how accurate that is, but as part of the escrow's agreement, we are guaranteed that we will as design can't perform, the ESCO is, um, will pay us the difference, if you will. Um, whether they see that or not, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, all in all, um, we are pretty pleased with the performance of Sunset Air. I just wanted to take a minute to thank some of the folks that were involved in that. Um, Pat Cole was their project manager. You saw a lot of him during the course of the, the construction. Jill Brettridge was the, the, the uh, that got engaged in the, the the audit, and then ultimately the design of the, the project. Uh, Jim Hayes from General Services at the state was integral in introducing this concept to us as well as um, 
connectance with some of the funding, including the energy efficiency grant, which we received. Um, we got some um, uh, benefit from Cascade Natural Gas as well as PUD for, for their part of this. And of course, Kurt Johnson, our local guy here, who was the project manager and, and really did a good job in coordinating all the and keeping things running in that process. So um, that concludes my report. Questions or comments? Well, just that I think it's a great, uh, <clears throat> a great leadership opportunity for the city to show the citizens that we're thinking ahead, trying to save money. Makes a big difference. Yeah, looks like a great project, and it looks like it's coming in and doing what we uh, we wanted to do, and it's kind of a win-win situation where we had some help on the funding for that too. Didn't you have somebody you wanted to introduce to the? To the commission tonight? I do have a guest here tonight. You have a guest? Who is that? My son is in the back row. Is that your son? Yeah. What's Max is um, Max is completing a requirement for his communications merit badge in Boy Scouts oh, yeah. by attending a public meeting, so he's learning how to communicate tonight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Max is your name? Yeah. Welcome to the City of Shelton Commission meeting. I'm Mayor Gary Kronz, this is Commissioner Don Pinnell, and Commissioner Mike Olson, and you can come back and visit us anytime. All right? It's good to see you. Okay, and no, staff, you're not recommending anything at this time, just an update on that. We thank you for that. All right, next under our um, new business is a Transportation Improvement Board Grant. And that's going to be presented to us by our city engineer, Mike Michael. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, <laughs> hopefully this one will be a little bit easier tonight. <laughs> um, some time ago, actually last fall, uh, we were awarded a Transportation Improvement Board grant for the construction of our proposed Lake Boulevard Pioneer Way improvements. Um, we've been kind of sitting on this award as we work through issues getting the design funding through uh, Federal Highways secured. and. Thankfully, we believe that is finally done. So at this point, we're moving forward with the second piece of the puzzle, which is the construction money. Uh, as you may or may not remember from past TIB grants, the first step is this fuel tax grant agreement that has to be signed. And that basically kicks off the process of securing our grant money. So what we have before you this evening is that uh, fuel tax distribution agreement. Um, the TIB grant is in the amount of uh, $3,186,270 with a city commitment of of $354,030. Um, just for background, the yeah, yeah. federal highways money is for uh, $450,000 worth of federal money with a $75,250 match to cover the design costs. Um, at this point, the uh, staff is requesting the commission approve the uh, grant agreement and authorize the mayor to sign the documents for submission back to TIB uh, and asking that this be placed on the consent agenda for next week to do just that. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Let you off easy. We're we're good with it. We're good with it. Yeah. Anytime you go get us four million dollars and we'll put up three hundred thousand. Keep doing that. I think that's a positive and a good idea. So I think we will take staff's recommendation at this time. Place that on the consent agenda for August twelfth, two thousand and thirteen. All right. That leads us to uh, any administration report. Okay. It, this is our second opportunity for general public comment. If anybody is here that would like to say something to our, our us, we are more than welcome to hear them. And it's a three-minute time frame there, or time limit, and seeing none, is there any uh, administration final touches? I got one, just came across my desk at about quarter to five. 
Uh, we just today received a letter from Public Works Trust Fund from the Public Works Board Department of Commerce. Uh, we had requested some time ago an extension on our Public Works Trust Fund loan agreement for the Basin 5 project to allow that to close out and we now have that extension to that agreement in hand and are going to be bringing a briefing forward on that next week. Okay. And, and who gave us that extension? Uh, Department of Commerce through the Public Works Trust Fund. Oh, okay. Very good. All right, our next meeting will be Monday, August 12th, uh, 2013 at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. This meeting is adjourned.